right, it looks like you made it to the final last video of the Redis series. So in this video, we're going to be covering two things. We're going to be covering on how to keep learning more about Redis and on actually using this thing on production. Because obviously that's what we want to do. We want to use this for one of our web applications, right? So we're going to go ahead and um, talk about a little bit about Redis. So we're going to go jump in into Redis.io. And we're going to go over to uh, clients. And like I mentioned in the p previous video when we wrote our C Sharp application, we actually used this, this uh, client called Service Tech Redis. So if you click on home page, it will take you to their GitHub repository. But from the GitHub repository, if you click on servicetech.net, it will take you to their website. So this is the tricky part here. When you're going into production, make sure right right here, you, you see that? Let me go back. Right here where it says pricing, you want to go here and actually learn more about the license they offer. Because remember, just because it is on GitHub, right, that doesn't mean that it is free. Although they do have a free... Uh, they do have a free starter package. So pretty much these are the packages that they have for servicestack.net. So if you want to use that plugin, it's going to cost you, you know, $2.99 per developer, and that gives you unlimited usage. A thousand per developer, unlimited usage. Or if you want to go ahead and go with the enterprise with the, which they're still working on right now. So the thing the thing you want to keep in mind with any of the plugins you choose. So let me go back to let's go back to back to Redis. The IO with any of these uh, clients that you choose to program with. So if you're going to develop a, a PHP application, and and you choose one of these uh, clients, make sure you go over their license and actually uh, read it and understand why they're charging and why they're not charging, why it's open source and whatnot. So he, let's go back to the C sharp one and it's, and I'll give you a good example of what I'm talking about here. So uh, Remember the one we used for C Sharp was Service Stack, and that gave us, you know, nice classes with a little bit of abstraction. We don't have to really worry about none of the commands that are needed for Redis. But if you look at Cider, look at Cider, not so popular, right? But look, minimalistic client for C Sharp and .NET. So this Cider will actually give you just a bare bones commands that you can actually run from your code, and they will run on the on the Redis database. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these clients and trying to decide which one to actually use in your project because once you start using it, you're going to be calling all those methods from that client and it's not going to be so easy to switch back to like let's say I'm on service stack then I want to go back to CIDR. No, it's going to, it's going to take some code modification. So make sure you, you, you take that into consideration when you choose your client. And finally, the last part, uh, after you go and look at the licenses and all that stuff, is if you click here on limited usage, they actually limit you to how many things you do with some of the free ones. So look at this free one. It only gives you 600 requests per hour with Redis client. Come on, we want to be making around 60,000 requests per hour, right? Because we're gonna, we don't want to be limited to these 6,000. So make sure you read all this stuff. Look at this. Only 10 tab actually only 10 operations in service stack. Huh? Doesn't sound so good to me, right? But I mean, it works fine if you if your application is small, internal app. You're not gonna be doing nothing too crazy. But if you are gonna go do crazy stuff, make sure you you take that into consideration. And finally, the last part I want to cover is is how to keep learning more about Redis. Because in this video, I just showed you a sample application. I showed you a couple commands. I mean, you still don't really understand like everything that is happening. So if you click on commands. It will show you like you know all the possible commands that there is and and there is just command after command and command and command right and if you, you just want to get a hang of things I will recommend you just to start with keys learn these and then move over to strings and then hashes and then list and then sets and sorted sets blah 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 so just you know take it one at a time and the best place to learn is if you go to try dot redis dot io it will actually take you right here where they have this little nice tutorial. So if you type in tutorial, it will go ahead and and start teaching you how to 
run commands on the server because what happens is if you choose a client that's bare metal client you're gonna have to actually do all this and then you type in next and it'll give you the next tutorial so that's about it if you guys enjoyed these videos make sure to give it a thumbs up that tells me that I should make more Redis videos if you guys did not like the videos make sure you give it a thumbs down so people know not to watch this video also make sure you follow me on Twitter because I'm constantly releasing new videos and the notes for this entire series are actually below this video and the rest of the videos so you can actually go over to the blog post and read more about how to go into production with Redis so hopefully you enjoy this video and we'll see you in the next one